Hello there. Most people who keep chickens do so because they want eggs. And so the kind of chickens that we keep are laying hens. But chickens do become addictive. I've warned you about that in a rather light-hearted video. And baby chicks are irresistibly adorable. And it's often not long before a small number of hens turns into let's hatch baby chicks. And that's where the heartbreak can start because baby chicks are adorable and the ones that grow up to be laying hens are very welcome. But what about the others? Is there a way to guarantee that all or at least most of the baby chicks that you hatch will grow up to be hens rather than roosters? If you do a search on the internet or YouTube, you'll find plenty of claims about ways to do just that. But do they work? Let's have a look at some of them. There's the old needle on a thread trick. Supposedly the needle moves back and forth if the egg will hatch into a male and moves in circles if the chicken side is female. It's a variation of the wedding ring on a string trick. And you can probably guess it's just an old wives tale. It's just chance, the mathematics of probability. So you might not have expected that one to work, but what about the one about the egg shape? Lots of people are very certain that if the egg is kind of round, it's more likely to have a female chicken side, and pointy eggs are rooster chicks. Yep, definitely, lots of people believe it. And it's not true. What is true is that a hen tends to lay eggs of a particular shape. Whether that's a bit more round or a bit more pointy depends on that hen's anatomy. If you're interested to know more about the shape of eggs, then check out my video about why eggs are egg-shaped. Am I sure you really wanted to believe that one? Yes, I'm sorry, I'm sure. It's not true. Look at it this way. Commercial hatcheries hatch thousands of baby chicks to supply the commercial hybrid laying hens that produce most of the supermarket eggs. They don't want male baby chicks either. If there was a way to predict which eggs would hatch out females, it would save the hatcheries thousands of dollars. If it was as simple as looking at the egg shape, We'd have teams of poultry scientists measuring the eggs before putting them in to incubate. And they don't. Every day, thousands of little unwanted male chicks are hatched out and then immediately sorted out from the females. The female chicks are sent to be raised up into laying hens, and the male chicks are not. What a waste. Ah, uh, but maybe you've read something that sounded really quite scientific about using the temperature to control the sex of the baby chicks that hatch. Could there be something in that? Well, yes and no. Adjusting the temperature of incubation cannot change the sex of the baby chick inside the egg. At least not if it's a chicken egg. It is true that temperature can affect the sex of a baby reptile as it's developing inside the egg. And that's really fascinating. It works because reptiles are not chickens. Chickens, like mammals including humans, use a system called genetic sex determination, or GSD. Whether we are male or female depends, for the most part, on our chromosomes. For humans, two X chromosomes makes a female, and one X and a Y chromosome makes a male. It's kind of similar for chickens, although for chickens the chromosomes are different in a rather intriguing way. If you want the details, check out my genetics video about that. 
But not all animals rely on chromosomes or genetics. Crocodiles, turtles, quite a few fish and the New Zealand tuatara use a system called temperature dependent sex determination or TSD. This system was discovered in 1966 by a French zoologist called Madeleine Charnier who was studying this very colourful African lizard called the rainbow dragon lizard. And the temperature dependent system works just like it sounds. Take for example a tuatara egg. In the middle third of the incubation period, if the temperature is low, the baby tuatara develops into a girl. And if the temperature is warmer, he becomes a boy tuatara. With turtles, it works the other way round. A bit cool and a male hatches. With warmer temperatures, the baby turtle is a girl. Incidentally, for this reason, it's possible that global warming might endanger the very existence of leatherback turtles. With global temperatures trending to be consistently higher, maybe very soon there will be no more boy leatherback turtles hatched at all. There's a theory that that's what caused the extinction of almost all of the animals of the Jurassic and Cretaceous period, when the temperature of the earth underwent a dramatic change. So few female dinosaurs hatched that lots of species could no longer reproduce and just died out. The only dinosaurs that didn't become extinct during the Cretaceous Paleogene boundary period were the avian dinosaurs, the ones that became what we know of as birds, including of course chickens. As I said, chickens, like humans, use genetics, not the temperature dependent system. For chickens and humans, it's the genetics or our chromosomes that count. And you can't make a boy into a girl, no matter what you do to the incubation temperature. But you can use temperature to affect the proportion of girls versus boy chicks that you hatch. Yes, you can, but it's not by turning the boys into girls. It's just that if the temperature at which you store the fertile eggs before you set them to incubate is a bit lower than ideal, then the chicks that manage to survive those harmful cold temperatures are more likely to be the female chicks, and the ones that die are more often the males. So you have a better chance of hatching more girls than boy chicks. But it's only because more of the boys tended to die because of the adverse effect of the temperature. It doesn't actually make a lot of difference. And you do tend to lose quite a few female chicks as well as the males. So it's not really a good option. But a couple of years ago, this concept got some German scientists very interested. The killing of day-old chicks has become a hot topic in Europe in recent years and in fact last year Switzerland banned the practice while France and Germany will make it illegal by the end of next year. So egg marketers and poultry scientists have been working on the problem. The first group to come up with a commercially viable system for in-egg gender identification was a consortium called Selegd which is made up of a Dutch company called Hatchtech, who make incubators, working with some scientists from the University of Leipzig and with the German supermarket chain Riva. In their system, on the ninth day of incubation, a fine laser beam is used to burn a tiny hole in the eggshell and a little bit of fluid is extracted and tested for the presence of female hormone. The tiny hole seals itself over naturally and the fertile egg containing a female chick is put back into the incubator to continue developing. The eggs that have no female hormone are used as eggs in the manufacture of animal feed. The system has been in use long enough now so that in European supermarkets you can now buy eggs laid by hens who were hatched using this system under the brand Respect Eggs. 
A slightly different system has been developed by the French supermarket chain Carrefour, along with its chicken supplier Les Fermiers de Loué and the AAT, Agri Advanced Technologies Group, a global specialist in hatching. This system uses spectrophotometry to tell the difference between male and female chicks without even making a hole in the egg. Commercial hybrid chickens are colour-coded at hatching. The boys have pale down and the girls are a darker brown. Incidentally, if you want to hatch colour-coded chicks, I explain how you can do that in my video about that. What's new about the Carrefour system is the ability to tell the difference in colour right through the eggshell as the tiny chick is developing its very first down feathers at about day 13. Female chicks hatched under this system have now grown up to be laying hens and their eggs should be reaching European supermarket shelves about this month. The aim of both of these systems is to incubate and hatch only chicks that are female and they are very successful on a commercial basis. But can you do it at home? Probably not. You can try a number of methods to influence the proportion of girl compared to boy chicks that you hatch and if you seem to have some success with one of them you'll probably think that it worked. But the science says if you're going to hatch baby chicks at home, just be happy with what you get. I hope you found this video interesting. I certainly found it fascinating to learn that some of the big commercial companies are bringing a little kindness into the commercial world. Thanks for watching. See you next time.